Hi, y'all. Uh, this uh, lecture is going to deal with moving charges again, uh, specifically moving charges uh, in a wire. So uh, basically a, a wire that's carrying a current and how uh, being exposed to a magnetic field uh, impacts um, that current carrying wire. Um, also, uh, to let you know, we will be doing a couple of the, uh, the multiple choice style clicker questions in this one. Um, so you may be, uh, may want to be prepared to pause, um, specifically those are on slide three and slide five for this particular presentation. All right. So what we have here over on the right hand side, um, is an image uh, where we've got, uh, basically, um, a magnetic field, uh, magnetic field, uh, always starts on North poles and ends on South poles. So we can see that, um, the magnetic field there. Is directed downwards um, and then um, we've got uh, basically a wire um, that's carrying current and um, that current is uh, let's see it's right there uh, that current is coming out of the page or out of the screen I guess and uh, of course uh, let's see if we look at um, the power supply there's my positive there's my negative up here and uh, current's going to go around and um, we remember that um, our conventional current i that i have circled there uh, shows the direction of some imaginary positive charges okay great so we've got moving positive charges at least that's the, that's the way we'll think about it we have moving positive charges coming out of the screen okay and then uh, what do we have here we've got um, the magnetic field is directed downwards, all right? So I have to be able to orient my hand in such a way that my fingers can curl downwards. Oh, okay, so I've gotta have my palm down. So if I'm sitting here watching this, um, watching this presentation, um, my, my fingers should basically be facing me right now. My fingers should be pointing towards me and my thumb should be pointed towards the right because here we go, my fingers uh, come towards me and yes, they can naturally curl downwards, and then my thumb is pointing to the right. So we're just using the same right hand rule as before. Um, we just have to picture these positive charges uh, moving in this wire. And so as a result, our force is gonna to be to the right. And if we've got this wire free to rotate, you see a little, maybe it's, it's just looped over a, a peg there. Um, if we've got this wire free to rotate, there's going to be a force on it to the right. And what's going to happen, this whole thing is going to swing upwards like that. All right. Um, so this force, again, direction of force is given to us by the right hand rule. All right. So on this next slide, what we're going to see, um, yeah, maybe, um, is development of an equation. Um, to, to let us be able to calculate um, the force on a current carrying wire. Um, and it starts out from uh, our force due to, uh, well, our force on a, um, just a regular old moving charge um, right there. Uh, force is QVB sine theta, we know that. Um, we can go through and, and plug some things in, so on and so forth. But the, the important bit is that we get to this end, end result right there. And that's the force on a current carrying wire. The force is equal to the current times L. What is L? L here is the length of the wire in the magnetic field. So the force is ILB sine theta. Um, what's theta? Uh, well, theta is the angle between basically I and B. Oh, I is the direction that the, um, the charge moves in. Okay. So kind of like V right there in our force equation. All right, so um, there we go. Uh, that's how we're gonna calculate the force uh, due to a um, magnetic field acting on a, uh, a current carrying wire. Now, the next couple of slides uh, don't actually use this, uh, this equation, but we, well, uh, I'll have to backtrack on that. It turns out that yes, the next one does. I lost track of what was coming next. So let's see. All right, this is a, um, again, a multiple choice question. Um, 
uh, clicker question. Um, so we've got three different wires uh, in a magnetic field, um, wire A, B, and C, and it is your job to try to rank um, these wires in terms of um, how much magnetic force or how much force is actually going to be exerted on each wire. Um, so uh, pause the video and see if you can come up with a response. All right, let's see what the right answer is. And it looks like the right answer is, uh, is choice B there. Um, so let's, let's see if we can maybe, maybe do this a little bit. Um, first off, um, this question uses cardinal directions, uh, north, south, east, and west. So let's, uh, let's remind ourselves, or, or let's at least lay down a framework for what north, south, east, and west are gonna be. So here we go, east north, so on and so forth. So east is to the right of the screen, uh, north is to the top of the screen, and then we can do out of the screen and into the screen um, as our um, uh, basically third dimension. Um, so it says wire A, so we'll look at wire A first. Wire A carries a current of two amps. So two amps, um, in what direction? Um, 45 degrees south of east, oops. I guess reading this would pay first, right? Okay, 45 degrees south of east, so there we go. All right, and then what's the direction of the magnetic field? It says the magnetic field is directed due east. Um, and we're, we're not given the, um, the size of the magnetic field, but we are told that this magnetic field is directed uh, due east. Um, and then, well, if we look at this, what's the angle between them? The angle between them is 45 degrees. So for wire A, if we were calculating this force, F is equal to I L B sine theta. Um, it says here that, uh, uh, or it, it either says, or we have to assume here that our wires are all the same length. It, it doesn't really, uh, makes sense to compare them otherwise. Um, but the force due to the force on A, uh, let's plug in what we have. We've got two amps times the length of A, which again, we're going to assume that all the wires are the same size, times the magnetic field strength B, uh, which we don't know, um, times the sine of 45 degrees. All right, and then if we plug into our calculator, uh, we can get the result that sine of 45 is uh, what, uh, 0 0.717. Um, so this ends up giving us the result that, whoops. This ends up giving us the result, 1.414 LB would be the size of my force on wire A. Now, we don't know what L or B is, but um, we can use this expression in, uh, in, in order to be able to compare it to the force on the other two wires. So let's, um, let's hold that in our mind, 0.414. And let's move on. Okay, so the next one says, well, what are we doing now? We're looking at wire B. It says wire B carries a current of eight amps due north. Okay, so here's B, we're doing B, eight amps due north. Um, and then um, it's still in that same magnetic field there. It's directed um, due east. And the angle there is gonna be what, a 90 degree angle because the wire is north, the field is east. So 90 degrees in between the two of them. Um, and now it looks like my force on wire B is gonna be, well, the current in B times L, B sine theta. This is eight amps times L times B times the sine of 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is one. Um, and then if I drop my units, the force on B looks like eight LB. All right, the force on A was what? It was uh, 1.4 LB. So B is definitely bigger than A. So we, we know that B is definitely bigger than A. Um, all right, well, what about wire C? Let's see here if we can figure that out. 
So for wire C, what does it say about wire C? Wire C carries 10 amps of current due west. So 10 amps due west. And we still have the same magnetic field that's going due east. Well, now our question is, what's the angle between them? Well, if one's going this way and the other one's going that way, um, what is it? It's 180 degrees. It reminds me of the scarecrow, scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz, right? Some people go that way and some people go the other, well, whatever. Um, so if I go to figure this out, force on C is the current in C times L times B times the sine of theta. Um, sine of 180 degrees is zero. Um, so this just becomes zero. That's when we stick 180 into there, um, zero. So as a result, my ranking here is exactly the thing that I've got in the box that B is bigger than A that is bigger than C if we're comparing the sizes of the forces on these three wires. All right. So let us see, oops, let us see what's next. All right, so on this one, uh, what do we have? We've got um, basically a um, loop of wire and that wire um, has, uh, at least part of it passes through um, a magnetic field. And um, we've got a North Pole and a South Pole um, somehow. Um, and of course, magnetic field always starts on North Poles, goes towards South Poles. So the magnetic field is directed to the left. And what does it say here? It says, um, and maybe I should circle where I'm reading. It says when the switch is closed. So there's a switch right there. When the switch is closed and the current passes through the circuit, what is the movement of the wire between the poles of the magnet. So it's, it's specifically asking us to focus in on that stretch of wire right there and asking, okay, when current starts flowing through this thing, how's this wire gonna move? Or how's that piece of wire gonna move? Um, and um, we've got five different choices here. Any one of them could be right. Um, I possibly could have reshuffled these. I know we only had, what, four things in class we could do, but it could be E. Um, so any one of these could be right. I want you to pause and think about this. So pause. And we'll see, uh, we'll see what we think is right. We'll try to anyway, okay. So the correct choice, it looks like is choice D that the wire moves away from us. Okay, why would it be choice D? Um, so let's see here. On this one, I have to keep in mind that this long plate is a positive plate. Um, the small plate is the negative plate if I'm thinking about um, uh, power supplies and batteries. Um, so as a result, my current is gonna go around basically in that direction. So specifically, if I focus in on what's going on right here, my current, right there is directed downwards. All right, and now I have to use my right hand rule. Um, and this, this one's a hard one because of how I'm sitting. Um, <laughs> yeah, painful. Okay, uh, hand, look at that. There's my hand. Yeah. Okay, so the hand points um, down uh, towards the bottom of the screen um, and then has to be able to curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So my hand points down towards the bottom of the screen and kind of curls to the left. And when I do that, um, at least when you do that as you sit here, hopefully you all are doing this, hopefully not with your elbow cocked over your head like mine is, um, but if you do this, uh, your thumb should point towards the screen. So the force here, the force on this, on this piece of wire is into uh, into the screen. Uh, so the force is into the screen. And if the force is into the screen, that means that, well, the wire is going to move away from us. And um, just as a check on me here real quick, wire moves away from us. Let me make sure here, whoops, put 
little dots, make sure here that I'm right. Yes, the wire moves away from us. All right, so that's good. And we will come back in the next video and do some calculations, some more calculations.